Welcome back. This is still Cell Guru, of course, and I am now ready with my all awesome tinker table to take you through this all new Asus 2 in 1. So, what is the big deal about these two? Well, this is how most people go about life they buy a phone, they buy a tablet, and then they have to maintain both charge both devices at night, make sure that they are perfectly synced, documents on both, pictures on both. Kind of a nightmare, right, to do that. Well, Asus thought, let's make life simpler and more economical. They got a phone, nice phone, pretty average specs, middle of the line specs, and then they give you this, a dumb tablet. It has a screen, it has a battery, and that's pretty much it. So what do you do? You do this. You put the tablet down, look at it, and say, What's the big deal? Then you turn it around and there's a notch at the back that perfectly takes this. So I'm going to put this here. So this is, of course, the phone. And as I put it in, it fits perfectly. I put it in, I'll turn it around and it vibrates and you've got a whole tablet for yourself. So why do I think that Asus has got it right this time with this generation of this two-in-one? That's because of the price. At 15,000 rupees, it actually makes sense. Think, the price point earlier used to be so expensive, you could go and buy a full tablet and a phone and still save some money. This time, they've got it right. So a full review, plus joining me, Ranvijay Singh. The Pad Phone series is an interesting proposition. It aims to give you the best of both worlds. A 7-inch tablet mixed with a 4.3-inch smartphone. The question is, does it succeed? And more importantly, is this a better proposition than a standalone tablet and smartphone? As you might have guessed from the description, the pad phone is actually two devices in one. A 4.3-inch smartphone that features a compact form factor that is easy to grip and hold, given its relatively small size compared to the other smartphones, is pocketable too. The phone features a metallic strip at the bottom of the display on the front, with three capacitive buttons on the top of the strip. A minor gripe here is that the buttons are not backlit. The 7-inch docking station houses a display on the front, a placeholder for the phone at the back, and a battery inside and an array of sensors on the front. The station itself is rather plainly designed, featuring an all-plastic body, but it is comfortable to hold. The tablet puts on a few pounds when the phone is docked in the back, but it is comfortable to operate. You don't want to be dropping this on its back though. The tablet itself doesn't have anything else other than the screen, sensors and battery. For horsepower, it relies on the phone which rocks an Intel Atom dual core processor paired with 1 GB of RAM. And the performance is quite good for the most part. The processor has no trouble chomping through Asus's customized skin on top of Android 4.4.2 KitKat. As far as skins go, this is not too bad. What remains to be seen is whether the update to the 5.0 happens in the near future. Whatever apps you run on the phone theoretically adjust to a higher 1280 by 720 resolution when dock it into the tab. The switch from phone to tablet is instantaneous though. Now, if Asus can only sort out the compatibility issues. There is 16 GB onboard memory which is expandable up to 64 GB via micro SD. The 8 megapixel camera on the back is a decent performer and there is a 2 megapixel shooter on the front. The Pad Phone Mini is a solid device with a few problems that keep it from being the best it could be. As things stand, as a phone, there are many phones in the 15 to 16,000 price range that offer a better, larger screen with better specs. As a tablet, Asus's own Nexus 7 beats it soundly now that the price for the 2013 model is down to about 16,000. Thus, while the Asus is a good product at an aggressive price, the onslaught of lower prices on amazing high-spec phones makes it just a tad less compelling. Along with Padphone Mini, Asus also showcased its Zenfone 6. We did review the Zenfone series some time back and it seems to be the favorite of our very own Rodi Ranvijay Singh. The Zenfone 6 features a 6-inch 720 by 1280 display powered by 2 GHz processor alongside 2 GB RAM and a 13 megapixel rear camera and runs on Android 4.3. I promise to you, in studio, we've got the man, the machine, slightly battered right now, but it is still run, Vijay, and we're going to find out from you what, you know, Asus has done very well with their new sub-brand Zenfone, right? I mean, they've really captured the market very well, so everybody's happy because you've got to get in a great product at a great price and give the competition a run for their money. It's great for the business, it's great for technology as a whole. So before this, I was not an Android, or Android user, so for me to come and I open, I switch it on, I loved it from the word go because that display to start with is amazing. Uh, a lot of the features like uh, like that 
like taking a selfie, taking a picture here, a lot of times your fans want that one picture for you to tweet. You know how good they feel if you tweet somebody's picture. This is called my famous island question. Okay. So this is where you're going to be marooned on an island. There's nothing else except for the three things that you can carry with you. One is a device. One is something else that you cannot live without. And third is a person other than your wife. So, Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba is the person. Let's get it out of the way. Uh, one thing that I, the device that I'm going to take, like I told you, is the Zenfone 6. And one uh, thing you can't live with. Rechargeable power back. Battery. Give me five. I was about to say, device chale ga kaise? Exactly. I knew it. I knew it because I have my headphone. No, I'm like, keep recharging. Solar powered, <laughs> rechargeable bank. And now it's time to go into retro territory with what I started off with. A phone that is actually a replica of the first...